What is up? I'm Jose Eduardo, and this is The Satellite. Today I want to talk to you about Generation Latino, why we are starting this vlog, and what Trump's proposed budget means to you as a young Latino living in Colorado. There are two questions I want to tackle with this vlog series. The first, how do conflicts get resolved during a time of such polarizing views and toxic trolls? They're toxic. The trolls are toxic. And the second, can meaningful conversations still make change? First things first, why does yet another vlog matter? Well, because this one is for you. It's by young Latinos for young Latinos. Every week, I'll cover relevant issues that impact your life and in a way that makes sense. I want to start conversations, and with each new episode, I'll introduce you to other young Latinos, like yourself, working with local organizations to fight for a better Colorado. This, this is Maria, and the story of how she started Generation Latino. The more years she spent working with decision makers, the more it became apparent something was missing. The Latino voice, specifically, the future leaders of the fastest growing demographic in Colorado. That's us, young Latinos. We're the future. So, a little over a year ago, Maria founded Generation Latino and made it the organization's mission to invite young Latinos to the table where decisions are being made for our communities. After all, if you aren't at the table, chances are you're what's on the menu. So, here we are, making our voices heard. Check out our video of Maria's story here and follow the links below for more information about our organization. So, where do I, a 21-year-old art student, come into play? Good question. In truth, if it were up to me, I'd be doing nothing but making art. For as long as I can remember, I've wanted to do nothing but be the Mexican Miyazaki. In the meantime, I decided that my skills can have an impact on my own community. And now, I'm a part of Generation Latino's first Building the Bench Summer Fellowship class. Before this, I spent two years as a legislative aide for a representative at the Colorado State Legislature. I've also worked for local campaigns, creating some of the mailers you may have found in your mailboxes if you live in Adams County. Sorry, but sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. I'm excited for this fellowship, and I've made it my mission to use this opportunity to amplify the voices of my people and my generation. I have a seat at the table this summer, and I want to invite you to join me in making these decisions. Use your voice to advocate for your community, to advocate for change, and to advocate for a better Colorado. Want us to cover something you're interested in? Leave a comment below and we'll add it to the schedule. Think we missed a major point? Let us know. This is a conversation after all. Maybe we'll invite you to join us and share your side of the discussion. We'll have a new episode every Friday afternoon, so hit that like button if you like what you see and subscribe to stay updated. Now that you know a little bit more about me and a little bit more about Generation Latino, let's get into it. What the hell does Trump's proposed budget mean for your daily life? Well, a lot actually. Generation Latino advocates on four major principles. Everyone should have access to affordable and adequate healthcare. Students shouldn't have to go into debt to get an education. Thriving families depend on fair economic policies. And every community deserves to drink clean water, breathe air free of pollution, and have access to public lands. These are the pillars that make the American dream achievable for everyone in this country. However, the budget released by the White House a couple weeks ago doesn't seem to agree with any of these priorities. President Trump was elected on the promise that he would make healthcare accessible to everyone without making cuts to Social Security, Medicare, or Medicaid. Yet, his administration's so-called skinny budget cuts more than $616 billion from Medicaid and the Children's Health Insurance programs which combined ensure more than 82 million people. What are you doing? 82 million people are gonna be left without access to adequate healthcare. 
the White House's proposed budget, which still has to pass Congress, would be the first to bar a specific provider. Planned Parenthood would lose Medicaid funding as well as health and human services programs. In many cases for young Latinas, Planned Parenthood is the only provider they see. The proposed budget would literally leave seniors and low-income families without access to medication and the treatments that they need. All this is without considering the $800 billion that the House has already decided to cut from healthcare with the American Healthcare Act. Now, let me put these cuts into perspective for you. When I was little, I had asthma. I still have asthma. It's a common ailment for Latino kids and many people in the Latino community. At the time, my dad built walls for a living, and he would come home from a long day caked in cement dust. Sometimes my parents were so broke that they couldn't afford my medications and I'd go nights without sleeping because if I did, my lungs would close up, literally. For the 40% of Latinos who have asthma, this budget would be a leap backwards if it gets past Congress. Who does this budget help if it's not helping low-income communities and Latinos struggling to get ahead in life? Meanwhile, the administration also wants to make getting an education tougher for young Latinos. Federal spending on education would be cut by at least $11.6 billion. This includes slashing K-12 programs, like free school lunches for the kids who go to the elementary school a block away from you, as well as higher education programs like subsidies for the federal loans you and your friends considered when contemplating the big college decision. It gets even more difficult when after school and summer programs are being eliminated entirely. Now, your kids, if you have them, don't have anywhere to go while you work. And it gets even more difficult when after school and summer programs are being eliminated entirely. You can't leave your kid at home alone while you go to your nine to five to put food on the table, to pay for rent, and to pay for those bills. If life-saving medication is out of the question, then so is a babysitter or a daycare. These are the very programs that enable young Latinos to thrive, which means will be hit the hardest. But again, these cuts still have to pass Congress. The proposed budget doesn't stop there. Colorado's federal offices are in the direct line of fire, specifically the EPA, NOAA, NIST, and NREL offices here in Colorado. Thousands of jobs within those departments are on the chopping block, as well as the important air, water, clean energy, and climate research they do. Not only will Colorado's economy suffer from the loss of these jobs, but so will our children. After all, studies show climate change and pollution disproportionately harms people of color more than predominantly white communities. Want to know where we stand after President Trump pulled out of the Paris Climate Agreement? Check out our response from last week here. And finally, President Trump has requested over $5 billion so far to build his wall, as well as an increase in immigration enforcement and ICE deportations. This does not include the $21 billion he will need to finish the wall. From reading this proposed budget, you would never know that the rate of illegal crossings is at an all-time low. Consider this, 40% of Latino children have asthma or some sort of chronic pulmonary condition. One in four Latinos live in poverty. Latinos will be hit the hardest by this proposed budget. Now is our chance to advocate for change. We have the opportunity to make our voices heard by calling Colorado's congressional members and asking them to vote no on the White House's budget proposal. If you are willing to work hard, you should be able to attain success. That's the American dream. Healthcare, education, financial stability, and a clean environment set the foundation for that dream. Now you know. This is what Trump's proposed budget means to your daily lives in Colorado. These are complicated issues, and I know that there's a lot I couldn't cover. So if you still have questions, leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it in the comments or in next week's video. In the meantime, hit that like button if you like what you see and hit that subscribe button to stay updated. And I'll see you next time.